It was my responsibility for the last nine years to run the camping program. And so I tell you this year, now that it's not my job, camp numbers were up. <laughs> to make sure people go to camp. You sometimes scholarship people to make sure they can go, but you know that together we also have a fund. And this year, together as disciples, we scholarship in some way 52 campers to make sure that everyone who wants to go to camp goes to camp. I have heard as I've had my chance to to go around and start visiting congregations and hearing your stories and your dreams and your struggles, I have heard stories of individual congregations finding ways to help another congregation in this region. Like the congregation in Bladensburg, Iowa, a small rural congregation with a strong sense of heart and passion and ministry, they heard about a need and they had an ice cream social. And they raised $1,420 to give to theirs and our sister church, Cedar Christian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, after the flood. This is what we do as disciples. Another bit of good news and why I think that indeed we have arrived. When we first came up with the idea that maybe we should do a retreat, a call retreat for those who might be interested in ministry. The very first call I received was from a mother of a 10-year-old who said, can my son come? I hadn't dreamed big enough. So my answer, well, of course. <laughs> but that wasn't all. We have seen more who want to come into ministry or feeling a call to ministry. We are about to raise up a new generation of people who are feeling a call to ministry, and that means that they see hope, and that gives us hope. So I tell you, particularly those members on the commission for ministry in this region, get ready. You're going to be very busy. About a year ago, I had a chance to visit a congregation who it seemed like most of the voices of the congregations were telling me they were fearing that they were about to die and that surely within a year it looks like they might just go ahead and die and fade away. But I took a call actually just two days ago. Okay, technically I was on Facebook. <laughs> same thing, sort of. But essentially this person, a member of that same congregation, was so excited and she was telling me the story of how 25 members of her congregation chose to spend all day together at a double-header Iowa Cubs game. <laughs> and she was also excited to tell me that their sanctuary is filling back up and they have a new sense of passion and energy for ministry together. I hear more and more of those sort of kind of stories in congregations like yours. Because we're changing to this new model where there aren't enough regional ministers and staff to do everything, the cool thing is that many of you have been stepping up and taking some of those ministries and doing it in a disciple together spirit because the ministry we do together is indeed a ministry we cannot do alone. And so for these things, I thank all of you for arriving. Now, there are lots of other things that have inspired me to believe that we have arrived again. And I know that there are more challenges that we have before us, but I assure you that we will do them together. My son says that what the Upper Midwest disciples really need that will fix us is recess. <laughs> he actually thinks that if we just find time to get together, to play together, that we will discover new ministries that God has in store for us. And I believe it. But some have asked, how does just getting together, how will if we just get together with people in our own church, or with that church nearby, or even as a whole region, how will that really change us 
and change the church that we are part of? Well, it happened to me this summer when I had the chance <clears throat> to spend time with Semko. Semko was a pastor from Poland. Now, you see, when I was young, girl, <laughs> in elementary school, I remember these jokes about Polish people, and I told a few of them myself. Maybe you know them too. But at the time, I didn't know anybody from Poland. And in fact, I didn't even know Poland was a country. <laughs> and so it seemed very easy to make a joke about people I didn't even know, to caricature a people I hadn't even met. But then I met Semka. And we talked about our different churches, churches and how they were different. And we talked some more and we talked about our passion and our vision together. And we realized how many things we have in common. We began to appreciate each other. We laughed and we cried and we became friends. At that moment, just spending time with Semko, those jokes aren't funny anymore. So I tell you that if we simply spend time together as a region, as a church, as members, when we spend time together, it is more difficult to demonize or tell jokes at the other's expense. If we remember when we get together like that, we remember that we are created by one God and that we are one family. And it changes how we hear each other. It changes how we are church. And in light of all of this, I hear that we're gonna have a all region disciples together recess time in October of next year, and I am inviting all of you to come to it. But before that, I'm challenging you to have some recess time in your own congregations and find a way to recess with the next congregation in the next town. Spend some time together and let it change who you are and let us change the world. I really believe that 200 years from now, at the School for Congregational, whatever we're calling it by then. <laughs> At 200 years from now, they will be talking about what we were doing right here in this time in their celebration. If you listen, I think you will hear our God saying to us right now, Oh, Eiji, I am glad that you have arrived. I am thankful that the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in the Upper Midwest, has arrived. I proclaim to all this day that we as the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, are not ready to die and fade away. We are a church of passion, with heart and purpose. So hear us as we say that we have arrived. And let us say right now to each other, I am glad that you have arrived. I look forward to the wondrous ministry that we will do together over the next couple of years, and that is my state of the church as I hear it in the Upper Midwest. <laughs>